We're here at the old Agricultural Engineering Building at Dukey Campus, formerly Dukey College on Yorta Yorta Country. And this has been the site and the meeting point for a couple of key COVA projects over the last few years, one of which is the Art and Ecology Residency. It began really through a series of conversations between COVA and people here at Dukey. And it was motivated by seeing that a lot of artists that were in projects and programs associated with COVA were more and more interested in exploring themes of environment and biodiversity and climate in their practice. And it seemed like a great opportunity to use the network and the infrastructure of the university having these regional campuses to give artists an opportunity to spend three to four weeks to spend some solid time researching, exploring, getting to know people and getting to know the complexities of a working farm, of an agricultural space. And a lot of fantastic outcomes have been delivered through that project. We've had works that have been exhibited um, at the NGV. We have an artist whose video work is about to be exhibited in London at Saatchi Gallery. In setting up the Art and Ecology Residency here at the Dukey campus, we got to know a lot of the community members of the nearby town of Dukey. And together with them, we established a series of workshops and activities themed around the intersection of creative practice and community resilience. So a big motivation for that was thinking about sometimes the artificial divide that we put up between community knowledge and campus knowledge. And if we're talking about things like resilience in the face of increasing conditions of climate change, um, involving those different sets of knowledges in the one conversation, we thought would just be incredibly valuable. The art and science program ACOVA began in 2019 with a conversation between myself and Dr. Ryan Jeffries, Director of Science Gallery Melbourne. We really had this shared interest um, to support projects, research projects at the intersection of art and science. In my role as coordinator of the Centre of Visual Art, I've really been able to see how vital it is to support rich discipline specific research and projects. In the Faculty of Fine Arts and Music, of course, we have world standard experts in painting and in sculpture, as well as in other disciplines specific to theatre and specific to music and dance, which is extraordinary. And we need that deep dive disciplinary knowledge as much as we ever have. I think also in this role, I've been able to see as well that um, it's important to not just support unilateral disciplinary statements that exist in parallel to each other um, and then framing them around a kind of overarching centre. Instead, I think it's really important to weave together disciplinary threads, which sometimes takes a bit more time and a bit more effort but that way we can really get a better understanding and reflect more clearly the interconnectedness of knowledge that exists in our world. Right after I finished my PhD, I was teaching in cultural studies and the coordinator of the subject I was teaching into cited a relatively new book that had just been published at the time by the anthropologist Anna Tsing. Um, and it's called The Mushroom at the End of the World. And now it's quite a famous book. But I remember him quoting from it and I rushed out to get a copy. And there was one line in particular that really stuck with me and thinking about that interconnectedness of knowledge. And it's saying proposes um, to listen and to tell a rush of stories is a method. And why not make the great claim and call it a science in addition to knowledge? And I just think that really summarizes a lot of the incredible projects that we've been able to support both through the art and science program, but also more broadly through the Center of Visual Art. Thinking about the idea of stories as knowledge, um, which we really specialize in in the Fine Arts Campus and the Center of Visual Art, um, I've really been struck by the different works that have come out of the Art and Ecology Residency here at Dukey. 
A lot of artists have co-created work with non-human participants in the campus, have included different community members around the campus. So for instance, Lauren Berkowitz on her residency here at Dookie walked around the campus and picked up different material on the ground that had either been dropped by plants or were dead matter or were plastics or different detritus from our lived experience and human experience here at the campus. And what she produced was this extraordinary sculpture that reflects that entangled synthetic and natural experience and material here at the campus. And for me, that really stands in as a microcosm of the entangled synthetic and natural experience across our planet. Science Gallery Melbourne is a creative space that encourages the collision of art and science. Uh, inspiring young people to explore, to question, to navigate the world in different ways through arts, sciences and technology. Since opening our doors, we have now welcomed well over 100,000 visitors to Science Gallery Melbourne and facilitated a whole series of uh, artists and scientists collaboration, opening up these ideas of speculation, provocation and problem solving around some of these great challenges. Through the Centre of Visual Arts at the Faculty of Fine Arts and Music, a whole series of art science programs have been developed, many in collaboration with Science Gallery and other faculties across the university. Uh, the framework of these programs is around creative residencies, uh, publications and also public discussions and forums. Focus areas for the art science program have been around the intersections of AI, art and technology, particularly in collaboration with the Faculty of Engineering and School of Computer Information Systems. Another key area is around the intersection of art and ecology in collaboration with the Faculty of Science and is a program that happens at the University of Melbourne's Dookie campus. In collaboration with Perimeter Editions, we're publishing a series of art science books. The first in the series is called Sight Unseen and is co-edited by Dr. Susie Fraser and Dr. Ted Collis. Sight Unseen considers phenomena in our universe uh, hidden from human sight now made visible through the combined efforts of artists and scientists. This collection of essays and images asks the reader to see together, to see via cross-disciplinary collaboration and to see with the help of different technologies and philosophies. The starting point for this book was the now famous event horizon image of the black hole and expands to see the togetherness often hidden from our gaze. Contributors include leading and emerging artists and scientists, including Peter Gallison, Carly Noon, Patricia Piccinini, Liam Young and Monica Bello, and coincides with the Science Gallery Melbourne's exhibition Dark Matters. Collaboration with Arts at CERN and the ARC Centre of Excellence for Dark Matter Particle Physics. An exhibition that delves into the unseen, the unknown and the unspoken and explores the fundamental essence of the universe. As we continue to see the impact of the global climate crisis, loss of biodiversity, uh, the rise of artificial intelligence and the opportunity of new knowledge generation, we are increasingly needing interdisciplinary practice and creative ways to adapt and survive an ever-changing world. Genuine art science collaborations uh, sometimes present challenges. Uh, it's sometimes a challenge to bring two people from very different disciplines to, together and expect them to collaborate and have a shared outcome. This presents also an opportunity and it really is around the importance of facilitation and support. Uh, this is a key thing for any art science residencies in terms of um, being able to support and facilitate uh, the, the connection and collaboration. Often the artist or the scientist has their own uh, methodology, uh, their own language, their own way of thinking and doing things. 
and you almost need this bridge, this kind of connector, uh, the role of uh, a facilitator in terms of being able to translate different ideas uh, to facilitate essentially sometimes a compromise and having a, a shared outcome from that collaboration. The idea of do we need disciplines is a really interesting one. I think there's a lot of advocates for this idea of um, anti-disciplinary or post-disciplinary practice or even this idea of a post-disciplinary world. I believe in terms of the importance of genuine interdisciplinary practice, we need disciplines to exist. It allows for really deep specialist knowledge, uh, methodologies and practice, and then allows for that intersection and collaboration to happen. If we take away uh, that deep specialty, I think there's this element of um, generalism that emerges and you don't then end up with truly kind of interdisciplinary outcomes. I was really attracted to apply for the COVA residency because I knew that my practice could be taken into areas that I otherwise would never be able to imagine. My practice is really founded on connecting people and places. So the work that I shot here in the quarry features old surveyors tripods that um, are actually sourced from Dookie College. Uh, and I really loved using materials from the campus because it meant that the objects themselves held the history of the place that I'd just been spending all this time. And, and the objects themselves are relics from a time of measuring land. And so they sort of have a cartography, a memory just in themselves already. Uh, and so I decided to really draw upon not only that side of the co college's history, but um, the dairy farm as well. So I was looking at byproducts of, of cattle, in particular cattle gut strung harps. And that sort of led me into this huge um, field of research around harps and harps that could be activated by the landscape, which are aeolian harps, wind harps. And I loved that idea of the objects holding the history and the memory of the place that they had been resting and then me bringing them to this sister site which is quite close to the college and allowing the quarry itself to activate and play them and sort of be a collaborator in the artwork. The reason why I was really interested in working with pythons is I heard that they they hear through vibrations. So there's already an altered perception going on. So the sound that we hear in the film I made is not what the, the snakes are experiencing themselves. And I loved playing with that idea of translation and altered perception. And I think that that's one of the benefits of doing a residency in a space where there's scientists is that you really get to have a completely different shared experience of changing perception regularly. The residency and the experience I gained from it is sort of long lasting and the effects are still happening even now and they definitely will um, in the future. I just love the fact that um, as an artist um, I've been invited into the space to sort of um, play with other people's language that otherwise wouldn't be um, accessible to me and then to perhaps make that accessible to other people through my own language which is a visual language. Um, and allow those two disciplines to sort of sing alongside each other. So The Crawling Man is an online durational work. It's an avatar of myself which has been set up to crawl through this grey Cartesian plane. His actions are modelled off my own actions um, and so I had to do the crawling and then I was looking at the sort of algorithms that exist that calculate our lifespan uh, you know, for insurance companies and other companies that want that information to decide what products you're, you're eligible for or what you should pay for something. And that idea of this algorithm having real life effects on my life, <laughs> on how I live and what, what, what things that I do in the real world, but it being a completely digitised form. And so I wanted to use that as a, I'm trying to find a way of kind of using it against itself and so worked out how long I had to live according to the various algorithms and that's how long the crawling man gets to crawl for and then he's going to die.
So he crawls across this space, across this plain, grey, continual crawling sort of humiliation, and then at the appointed time of my death, he will die. Thinking about how the effect that images have on the world and the world has on images and that relationship and what makes what is always interesting to me. And so we all participate in it, we all, we all do it. We have these selves which we bring into existence which are based on our physical self and our relation to the physical world. And it exists. they exist online and then they, they kind of have their own life which runs parallel to ours. So I was working with the Faculty of Engineering and the group inside that called the Human Computer Interaction Group. Their research area is about that interface between the human, the body, and the computer and the back and forth and what that can be used, which is all to do with uh, machines about how we image ourselves, which is really interesting to me coming from photography, which is all about, you know, these machines which reflect our world or, or, or make our world. And they didn't really consider the machines so much in their research outside of the practical user design purpose of the machines. But I was really interested in, well, what does that design, how, how is that design affect the actual person using it as opposed to just producing what it does. And so it was really, ended up being really interesting conversations between us because uh, we're both sort of coming to the same area but from different sides. <laughs> So at the moment it's actually being exhibited at the NGV as part of Melbourne Now exhibition. In this version there's a 17 screens uh, which are all operators individually from each other and so it's great to have a physical version which attracts a different type of interaction than the online version. I mean that was purposeful part of the Crawling Man's design is th that action of crawling um, is sort of uh, you know, it's a sort of humiliating action and the idea is that, you know, why can't my online version take my pain? Why does it, why, why does it always have to be so perfect online? Why can't we make it the crap space so that my life can be perfect? <laughs> and, and it is also interactive where people can log into the site and an avatar appears for them as uh, I've designed them as boxes based on fruit boxes <laughs> and they look sort of like, you know, disjointed heads. Uh, and they just appear in the space when someone logs on and they watch the, the, the man crawling past and they just act as viewers um, to mirror our own viewing. And you know, there's no, you can't do anything, you can't stop him, you can't interact, you can't interfere, you can only watch. Um, and so that, that horizontality that is up at the NGV, the moment that's set up, it's kind of a reflection of that again, where you are bending down, sort of watching from above this sort of God position as this you know, digital person just is sort of humiliated.